Okay, so uh, let's just go back to two scriptures that I missed earlier. So if someone can read from Isaiah 66 verses 7 and 8. Before she was in labor, she gave birth before her pain came. She delivered a male child who has heard such a thing, who has seen such things. Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Okay. So this uh, scripture, this passage is a prophetic passage which is talking about the birth of a nation, Israel. Okay. So what does it say? It, it says that uh, before she travailed, she brought forth, before her pain came, she was delivered of a male child okay so this is the uh, king james version which i have open here uh, and it says who hath heard such a thing who hath seen such things shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day or shall a nation be born at once for as soon as zion travailed she brought forth her children so notice a couple of things here that uh, the birthing happens right almost immediately or quickly that is one thing and then you also notice that when one travails the birthing happens okay? and there's also a reference to the formation of a nation can a nation be born at once so if we look at you know uh, what happened to the birth of israel we know that it was born suddenly there was no nation of israel before 1948 was it 1948 i hope i'm right about that uh, but that's when israel was born 48 48 correct okay i think yes 1948 but this is there as a prophetic word in scripture so it was suddenly formed the nation of israel but having said that if we look at the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 to 23, it talks about Zion. Okay, it talks about Zion. Now, let's not confuse. Uh, Zion in the book of Hebrews is primarily referring to spiritual Zion. We're not talking about literal Zion as much or the physical place but spiritual zion who is spiritual zion us the church okay so the church is spiritual zion so when we talk about the birthing of god's people there is the association of travail but then we are that spiritual zion so when zion travails she gives birth. That means the church travails. You remember earlier we said belly, womb. We are the womb of God. The church is the womb of God. So that is why we are saying we are the womb of God. Or we are the Zion. And Zion travails. Or we pray. Then things will happen. Okay? Then God will release his purposes uh, regarding various things. So let's remember, these two passages are also very crucial. One is about the uh, prophetic birthing of the nation of Israel. But we are talking in terms of the church because we are the spiritual Zion. Okay? When we pray, then God will pour out his, um, his spirit and his blessings. Now, I strongly encourage us. Some of us were saying, give us more examples about... Um, travail so for more examples it's good to read about revivals because revivals the way revivals took place is mainly through prayer and people who intensely engaged in prayer okay so when we read the revivals you will get a good idea about what this kind of travailing prayer means all right so remember this uh, now let's move on let's talk about the life of Jacob. So in Genesis chapter 32, there is 
this description of Jacob moving ahead to meet with his brother Esau. But while he is on that journey, uh, he is left alone for some time. And then we see that he wrestles with God. So what is this whole thing of wrestling with God? We talked about intercession, which is intense, which is travail. Now we're talking about having an attitude of intensity with God. You know, for God, he doesn't like lukewarm. He says, you either be red hot or you be cold. If you're in between, I'm going to spit you out. That's what we see in the book of Revelation. So God doesn't like this in between, like one foot here, one foot there. He wants us to be passionate. And so that's why when we are talking about travailing, which is intensity, passionate prayer, you know, deep prayer, heart, soul, mind, everything is in it as we pray. In the same way, the attitude of Jacob pleased God. He's wrestling with God. So what is this wrestling all about? It's about spiritual passion. It's about spiritual intensity. So while we are saying prayer, an intense prayer, it's almost like intense prayer only. Right? So what exactly happened? We know that uh, you know he was alone and um, uh, he was like God was there and he was wrestling with God and he didn't let go of God. So what was his prayer request in Genesis 32? Yes, he reminds God about his promises. And what does he say? What is his prayer? Yes, I won't let you go unless you bless me. Okay, it's verse 26, Genesis 32. Now, when we look at this, what comes to our mind? Promises. But what, what do you feel about Jacob? Yeah, he was not giving up. See, he wrestled with God to receive something from God. Okay, he could have stopped wrestling because it was too hard for him. He was not winning the wrestling match at all. But he didn't let go. And he was determined, right? Very determined, passionate. He says, I will not leave you. I will not leave you till you bless me. And we read the rest of the passage when, you know, uh, unless he was given a limp, only then his grip in the wrestle kind of became weak and he let go. All right. But till that time, with all the strength which he had, he was passionate. He was red hot. And that's why we are talking about Jacob. He, he was not a man who said, yeah, okay, I'm living for God. That's it. He was not... Um, you know, like uh, low intensity because God loves high intensity. He likes it when we hunger for him. He likes it when we are passionate for him. He likes it when we are thirsty for him. So that's when in Isaiah 44, it says, I will pour waters on him who is thirsty. You know, when we come to God and we are not thirsty, it's as if we have already had a full stomach and we say, okay, if you give leftovers also, it's fine. That kind of attitude God doesn't like. He likes seriousness. He says, okay, you come to me. If you're thirsty, I will pour out waters on you. Right? When we are hungry, that's when God releases. The greater the hunger, the spiritual hunger. Remember the other day I was talking about the gifts of the spirit. When you earnestly desire, not just desire, earnestly, meaning sincerely desire, the gifts will increase. The flow of the anointing will increase. Right? Everything will increase. The work of the spirit will increase. So God is looking for intensity. And that's why we are talking about Jacob. Jacob was not a man who was in between. He was very clear about his passion for God. And he said, God, 
with all the strength i have i'm coming after you i will not leave you i've determined i will not leave you no matter what it costs me unless you bless me you have to bless me can you imagine a man going after god like that right and later on there are passages in hosea and obadiah where we read about god being happy with jacob for doing this that's why i'm saying it was a good thing right in genesis we don't see it but later in obadiah and in uh, hosea we see that god chooses to bless jacob because of his attitude his passion his intensity so having an intensity with god is something that we all need okay and god likes it god does not like in between okay so what are the what are the blessings that uh, were upon jacob or the approval of god on on jacob's life there are two passages in the notes um, maybe online batch can you read it out hosea 12 and obadiah 1 it's in the notes he took his brother by the heel in the womb and he, in his strength he struggled with god yes he struggled with the angel and prevailed he wept and sought favor from him he found him in bethel and there he spoke to us that is the lord god of hosts the lord is his memorable name so you by the help of your god return observe mercy and justice and wait on your god continually mm. Amen. Thank you, uh, Juliana. So here, verse four. You now it says he struggled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought favor from him. He wept and sought favor. Travail. He was in pain, in agony. He desired God's blessing. Obadiah. Obadiah one seventeen. on mount zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness the house of jacob shall possess their possessions okay so here it says on mount zion there'll be deliverance uh, and there shall be holiness the house of jacob shall possess their possessions what did jacob ask bless me what did god say okay you will have your possessions or your blessings you will have now again we can think why didn't god say the house of abraham or the house of isaac because it's the same house why did he say the house of jacob because it was jacob who begged god or who asked god intensely for the blessing so see how mindful god is god is saying the house of jacob will have its possessions so this is a reminder for each one of us to have an intensity with god to be determined to receive his blessing now one more comment about jacob is you have passages like in micah uh, it says uh, jacob i have loved but esau i have hated why why does god speak like that because jacob was serious about spiritual blessing whereas esau was careless with spiritual blessing esau had birthright by birth he was the older brother and uh, god gave him the birthright but we know what happened he was careless god gave something but he sold it for lentil soup so what does that show about the attitude of esau carelessness we don't care much about what god gives us like okay fine you take it i'll take some i'll trade it for something else so god is so upset with esau that he says that you know i i hate esau but i love jacob i love jacob why attitude is different what is the attitude i want the blessing i want the spiritual blessing you know he comes to god with that kind of an attitude so we must desire the blessings of god that's what pulls it into our lives and walk with intensity before god and that's why jacob was so blessed and in fact it says you know later on esau cried and he said god you know forgive me give me and and all of that but it never came back to him because there was a time that god gave for him to 
received the blessing, but he took the spiritual blessing lightly and then it was gone. Only Jacob had it because he went after it. Uh, yes, Vinay, you have a question. Pastor, can we also, uh, like, if we have to apply it in our lives, uh, yes. the Esau and Jacob story. Yes. Um, Esau, um, he, uh, reg like, he neglected what God had given him birthright. Yes. So God also has purposes for us. Right. Even we can neglect it for something else. Like, yes. if, if we are indulging in, like, not sin exactly, but, uh, like, the time we have to pray, we are just using it for entertainment the yes. time we have to read bible we are doing something else like the like we have to fight like jacob but we are doing it like esau we can we we can lose yeah, of course, our things we, we can look at it like that also to just be more determined uh, to follow god and actually most of the people whose lives we study through whom a lot of miracles happen and all they were all very uh, they were all serious. Like if you just read about Smith Wigglesworth. Okay. Now I'm not condoning anyone. We know everyone had ups and downs, good and bad. But we can take from the good things in their lives. So he decided that he will not go, uh, you know, without prayer. Like every 30 minutes he dedicated to God to pray. Can you imagine? Like that's too much. Every 30 minutes, like literally he is praying all the time. If you study about Evan Roberts, young man, he was always praying. Even when he was walking on the road, he was praying. People used to make fun of him because his mouth was always moving. Okay. People might say, why so much intensity for God? Like what's wrong with you? I'm not saying we should go crazy like that, but the attitude, they were serious. They knew what God had to offer, the spirit, the blessings, the purposes of God, the will of God. And they were like, I want to see something in my lifetime. You know, and they were like that. And they went after God. So it's it's more about the attitude. It's a it's more about the pursuit of God, you know, through their lives. And we can talk about so many people. So many people. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about Jacob, about uh, intensity, pursuit? Okay. This is, again, because uh, God is using wrestling to show us about passion and pursuit. So what is wrestling? You know, usually in wrestling, you need to get a good grip of your opponent. Otherwise, you cannot subdue them. So it's about grip, right? It's about your strength and it's about the grip. So it was not so much the physical act of wrestling as much as it is a spiritual grip. So that's the question. How is my spiritual grip on God? Is it like light or is it strong? So we must have a strong spiritual grip on God. How to have it? Um, I think we, we must um, really work on our hunger. We must really work on our spiritual hunger. See, uh, when like a baby is born, you know, they'll see if the baby is uh, feeding well. Generally, that's something that they check for. Because if it is... Uh, then it's a sign of good health. Good health. Now, you and I can check our desire for God's word or God's presence or, you know, uh, the, the work of the spirit. Just check your own desire. Nobody needs to comment on my desire for God. I keep an account on and in seasons in my life when I feel like, you know, I'm a little bit careless or I am not... Like, okay, fine, if I don't study the word, it's fine. I feel like something is wrong with me spiritually. Because even in the physical, hunger is a sign of good health. So for me, this is the thing. Like if I'm, if I'm starting to be a little careless about anything, then uh, I feel like what's going wrong? You know, why, why, am I, why is my mindset like this? Am I wasting too much time somewhere that I shouldn't be? So I kind of check myself. 
so yeah that's one thing that i can think of how to maintain that spiritual intensity always be accountable to yourself and uh, nobody see nobody can tell how much time we are spending in the word or in prayer or anything but we are our best judge right so if my hunger is reducing if i'm i'm feeling like i'm not able to take a lot then i feel like something is wrong my hunger has to be more so i feel like yeah working on your hunger it, it's kind of helpful to see where you are shock sure. mm -hmm. yes yes so if we don't sense a burden and we say you give me the burden of your heart yeah that's fine it's fair so god can put that burden in us no no we we just have to work on ourselves you know uh, and just check spiritual health so as long as we are maintaining healthy in the word and uh, you know serving serving god as people we are doing fine yes sure any any other questions thoughts ma'am yes. uh, like suppose there is a very famous pastor and big pastor mm. and he have meetings like throughout the week and every week it's it's the same that yes. he have meetings have to go there right. and he got free at 9 or 10 till morning 9 of from the morning 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock 7 or anything mm. and he gets free at night at 9 o'clock right okay so every day it's like that going there here have uh, conferences meetings have to meet certain people it's like total busy life mm. then how can that person build a intensity with god because we need that at that time also yes yeah so uh, see in in matters like this one has to make a strong decision right uh, regarding our time uh, where we we can't we cannot we say like spread ourselves out thin which means that we exhaust ourselves because in some revivals we see that people what they did was every day they were ministering every day they were ministering and they came to a breaking point because we are not god we have a physical body we have emotional needs you know we we have a mind we need some uh, rest for our mind so if we ignore all this and what you're saying right morning to evening meeting 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 every day sooner or later they will experience what is called as burnout okay uh, if there is a person like he get free and after that he's like uh, preparing for a sermon mm. and he's uh, praying and started reading bible and preparing for a sermon asking yes. revelation yeah. so is that does mean that he's having intensity with god um yeah see there are times when one has to be in that busy schedule but if they are making time for god and uh, yeah managing that time with god in the middle of that should be fine like managing and working at the same time yeah like so if appearance. they are able to cope like that it's it's fine uh, but even then uh, i look at a very busy schedule as a recipe for disaster so we need a separate time yeah we all have to make separate for in, time to maintain that intensity with god right yes we need to can't um we can't have it in our work life like no, see, even if a pass uh, work work is there and uh, again you know when we study about workplace we'll see that work is also from god when god created man god created work he blessed man so we have fulfillment attached to our work so it's a blessing work is actually from god it's a blessing even when we are working it it strengthens us 
got it so i'm talking about a balance if a balance is missing then there will be a burnout but if there is a balance then it's okay so one needs to do their job but at the same time check whether you have sufficient time of rest sufficient time with the lord um and yeah so that that should be the way we are looking at our time one small question again so if i am preaching all day mm -hmm. and i am in my church also and working and uh, yes. like working in a god's word only like preparing sermon or classes or something like that uh like and i came home and i feel i don't feel like reading bible mm. because i am doing that from whole day that every scripture i am reading and doing this and that but i feel like uh like and this is continuing from the several days like two weeks it's happening that i don't feel like reading bible mm. because i am looking at the bible since morning so does we can make intensity by praying and uh, normal praying only that's the question like can we make intensity with god by praying normally okay god i'm i came into your presence i pray for 20 or 30 minutes then the intensity will work like that yeah so see hopefully there's an alternate time for reading the bible maybe in the morning before you go you came back tired and you want to spend time in prayer fine but maybe you're taking time in the word in the morning my point is we should not miss out on our spiritual disciplines on regular days there will be times when we are traveling a lot or somebody is in the hospital you remember we discussed that in prayer that there will be such seasons but once it is over you try and come back to your rhythm that's when we can uh, remain healthy yeah we have to make time for it we we need to try and make time for it if we don't make time then sooner or later it will affect us okay any anything else to discuss about this not really okay uh, let's move on then we'll just uh, go ahead with chapter 13 which is about ministering through prayer now it it is possible that god calls some of us into the ministry of prayer everybody can pray but that is not necessarily a ministry of prayer ministry is what minister is what that word what does it mean ministry service service so some of us are called to serve others through our praying so that is what is ministering through prayer so let's look at um, you know how this whole ministry of intercession works so we notice that in the time when paul was uh, on his missionary journey in the third missionary journey he came to a place called as ephesus and in ephesus he had a time for two years to teach god's word you know it's almost like bible college where people used to come and he would teach god's word equip them thoroughly in god's word and in ephesians 9 we read that these people went out and they made an impact in the region of asia so they all came they all got equipped they all went back and they made a huge impact you know where they came from among these people was a man by the name of epaphras okay epaphras why are we talking about epaphras because we read that paul is uh, respecting him or giving him the honor of a minister of god and epaphras was most likely the person who established the church in a place called colosse so because paul was not able to travel everywhere his disciples or you may call student they went and they planted churches in certain places so paul has never gone to colosse but still he writes an epistle to the church of the colossians and epaphras 
was the person who planted that church. Okay, now let's read what Paul writes about Epaphras. It is there in the notes. Um, Colossians 4, verses 12 and 13. He says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a bond servant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you and those who are in Laodicea and those who are in Herapolis. Okay, so let's try and understand what Paul is saying. He's talking about this man, Epaphras, who learned under him, who planted the church of Colossae, and he's calling him bond servant of Christ. If we read some of the epistles in the New Testament, bond servant is a term which is used for apostles. Paul, a bond servant. Why is he calling Epaphras bond servant? That means that he's giving him a high honor for his ministry as a prayer warrior, as an intercessor. So can you imagine the respect that he's giving a man of prayer equal to an apostle? So he honors the ministry of an intercessor. What else can we see there? Laboring fervently, laboring fervently, for you in prayers. So here is a man, we can even say travail. He was spending a lot of time in prayer. So where, as he was praying, what, what is the result? Laboring fervently for the people, for the people to be blessed, for the people to mature, for the people to uh, walk in the purposes of God, many things. So there is an intercessor who is spending their time for the people. And that is who Epaphras is. He has a strong ministry of prayer. So we understand. Imagine, you know, laboring fervently. Laboring we use for, you know, if we are building this, constructing this building and sweating in the heat, you know, laying the bricks. Labor. We are laboring fervently. When we are teaching the word, it's a labor. Study the word correctly, deliver the word, you know, in an acceptable way. It's a labor. But notice, Prayer is also labor. And there are certain people called by God who are called to this kind of labor, laboring fervently or sincerely. And he says that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. That's the job of a teacher, a pastor. What are they doing? So that the people of God may be equipped to become perfect in the will of God. What is the intercessor doing? Same thing. When they are praying, that people may become perfect in the will of God. So you see the results. There are powerful results when we engage in the ministry of intercession. And notice, it also says in verse 13, he has great zeal. Okay, all these words in, in the Bible, right? Like uh, Jacob wrestled, passion, pursuit, zeal, red hot. Fire. The Bible is like that. God is not about cold, lukewarm, no way. Those temperatures are rejected. You have to only be boiling hot. That's what God wants. So here again it says, this man, he has zeal in prayer for you. So he's passionate about praying. So can intercessors be passionate? Of course, why not? They can have a lot of passion. For prayer. Remember we talked about David, uh, Daniel Nash? How much he prayed, no? He committed his life for prayer. So we can be those people who are passionate for prayer. And notice one more very important thing. Last part, it says, those who are in Laodicea and those in Herapolis. So Colosse was um, in, in one spot and close by you have these places, Laodicea, and Hierapolis. Now, Epaphras, being in Colossae, he's praying for people in other cities. What does this teach us? There is no distance in prayer. I can be in Bangalore, I can pray for people in Delhi, Mumbai, you know, I can pray for people in Africa, United States, 
Fiji, anywhere. We can. So, Ministry of Prayer. See, for the Ministry of Teaching, okay, thank God for technology these days. You can be in Bangalore, but people can hear you in other nations. But for the Ministry of, um, uh, you know, many other ministries, you probably physically have to be there. When it comes to prayer, we can be wherever we are, right? And uh, there is an impact on other people, other places, cities and nations so sometimes you know i wonder if uh, the the intercessors of god are you know some of our grandmoms and mums who have dedicated their life for prayer how much they prayed or how much they are praying who knows but those are the prayers that are making the impact got it so that's how powerful the ministry of intercession is there is no distance in intercession or in prayer we can pray for anyone Okay, so those are some insights that we can learn from this passage. Uh, now, a few more things about the inter, uh, ministry of intercession. It's a tough ministry because you remember we talked about uh, Jesus' instruction. When you pray in secret, God will reward you openly. This is in Matthew 6 verses 5 and 6. So. The ministry of intercession is a difficult ministry because we are generally by ourselves. Nobody knows our name. At least if, let's say we are preaching, right? We are standing in front of people. People see us. They say, oh, so nice. You spoke so well. I'm so blessed. Thank you. There's some feedback, some recognition. Intercession, zero. Nobody knows. You're behind your closed doors. Only God knows. You know. So it's tough unless we have strength of character, right? Ministry of intercession is very difficult because easy recognition is not there in ministry of prayer, intercession. So for the intercessor, an intercessor really needs to um, depend on God and mature in God and not worry about people knowing that they are doing the ministry or not. God knows. And uh, that is sufficient. But you realize how much strength it takes to not be noticed and yet to pray, laboring fervently. Okay, So that is something about the ministry of intercession. Uh, and apart from that, you know, we read um, that our prayers are like an incense before God. In Psalm 141 verse 2, it says, Let my prayer be set before you as an incense. Incense. Incense is, you, know, you can imagine before the Lord, there's this smoke with frag fragrant smoke that's going up. And the book of Revelation says that the prayers of the saints are an incense in a bowl before God. So whenever we pray, our prayers are in front of God. How does God look at it? Incense is there. In his presence. Our prayers are incense before the Lord. Okay, So let's remember that. Our prayers don't go waste. Directly it goes into the presence of God. And our prayers are before the Lord. So just few things about intercession. Uh, the ministry of intercession is tough. We need to put in a lot of energy, time, have a lot of courage, compassion to pray for people. Um, we can, of course, do it anywhere, anytime. But here's this last thing that we must not brag or, um, you know, in other words, go around telling people, I'm an intercessor, you know, I'm an intercessor, because we lack recognition, right, in terms of prayer ministry. So there's no need for us to keep telling people, do you know I'm an intercessor? There's no need. We just quietly do our praying and God does his work and our reward comes from the Lord. So that is one thing that we must remember, not just for intercession, any ministry. Let God promote you. Don't try to promote yourself. right? So that's applicable even when it comes to uh, the ministry of intercession. And whenever we pray for others, we are blessed. In Job 42, verse 10, it says that when Job 
prayed for his friends the lord gave him twice as much as before so when we are praying for others we may feel like what is my benefit but god will bless us when we pray for others that is the principle in god's word we will be blessed even if we are spending a lot of our time praying for other people uh, any questions please feel free to ask we'll address them before we close my question is on intercessors movement uh -huh. where people gather for intercession yes which is normally done publicly and there is many people gathering what would you say about that yes yeah so uh the, the question brother mavai is is that okay or like what what is the question one is because i see there is the, the strict instruction of intercessory being done in the closet so to speak it's not like a public thing mm. the question is that we have continuously seeing a lot of a uh, public mm. display public. of intercessors yeah yeah no but that's fine that's fine uh, so individually god calls us to the secret place but if we are praying in a group and we are in a like sort of a public setting there's nothing wrong with it because we see that even in the book of acts right they all gathered together and they prayed so that's fine also i hope that uh, answers your question yeah 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 sure it clarifies i also have a clarification i would want for you yes to yes julia um the, the scripture you gave us in isaiah 67 about that happening immediately Mm -hmm. and the one that followed in hebrews are they related in any way or it's just the way they are put in the in the notes are they related in the bathing process and in the church being um the church being referred to as mount zion yes so it is it is not just connected hebrews 12 talks about it very clearly about the spiritual zion so it is in scripture Is that okay, Juliana? You can probably go back and read it. Yeah, I, I had I'd, I'd read it. I was just asking what you are talking about, the uh -huh. bathing happening immediately in Isaiah 66, 7 and 8. Right. In the scripture in Hebrews 12, 18 and 23. Uh -huh. Are they connected in the way of traveling? Was there a connection or each was being, we are looking at it in a differently in the, in the traveling in the prayer of tra traveling okay you mean the the scripture about jacob no verse no the one in page 50 verse 15 yeah a page 50 isaiah 66 7 and 8 hmm. yeah when you are bringing out the issue of traveling in prayer that sometimes it happens immediately and you talked about the nation of israel and how it was born in a day then you referred after that we came to the church that is called mount zion hebrews 12 yes. 18 and 23 yes yes so i was asking isaiah 67 and the church being called mount zion is there a connection or a connection in the sense of the prayer of traveling or we deal with them separately in the tra prayer of traveling yes so um See the the reason we we connected those two passages mm -hmm. is to is to explain that Mount Zion is the church. So that that was the um, that was the point that we were trying to make. So we mm -hmm. looked at Isaiah sixty six separately, and then we looked at Hebrews twelve to make this point that. The Zion that is being spoken of is the church. And so the church needs to pray in order okay. to give birth to the promises of God. Okay. So okay. that's that's how uh, we try to explain it. All right. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Right. Thank you. Okay, one last question from uh, Saubhagya. She says, uh, I cannot share the gospel with... Uh, 
you know she says certain individuals but i can pray for that person for their salvation is that okay so yes we can pray for them but the bible also tells us to share right like unless we share then how will they hear so we must always pray for an opportunity to share now if we don't get the opportunity that's fine but uh, always ask for an opportunity to share also so bagay it would be nice if we can share as well yeah i, I hope that uh, answers your question thank you pastor okay it's great the, thank intercession you is, yeah intercession is very uh, powerful and it is true mm -hmm. thank you so much because the first time pastor because uh, when i was uh, praying that time i'm very new in jesus christ no mm -hmm. uh, i'm not pray more like you know i don't know to um, means i don't know pray also more and i i don't know god word also properly means for scripture and everything i think just small praying i'm doing but uh, but my faith is very strong and i'm i pray to my village lord save my village people i'm crying and i pray, pray and fast pastor and all my village people are all are hindu no one family also believer no one family only three three uh, uh, three house means three family they are roman catholic otherwise all are hindu pastor then i'm praying and fasting i don't know uh, god word and i think no more then i'm crying and praying fasting then after that after two and three month pastor i don't know uh, mix uh, other mix pastors i came two pastors i came in my village and they proclaim the god word then they went they went up to two months and again after two months uh, my village some people are uh, believe lord jesus christ yeah Pooja, i'm so sorry to one... interrupt i'm so sorry to interrupt you uh, actually i think we've yes, run sir. out of time so what we will do is we'll we'll just go ahead uh, we'll pray and we'll close and after that you're free to share so i'll be here i'll listen to you is that okay we'll uh, maybe let the others uh, uh, go leave the call yeah so uh, yes so let's just pray can somebody pray in class thank you for the lord for this uh, wonderful time lord that we have uh, that you have given us this uh, word lord so lord i want to pray that whatever we learned lord i apply those things into our life lord and uh, thank you lord for the sound learning lord and thank you lord for the wisdom that you have provided through the through this subject lord in mighty name of jesus i pray amen amen, amen. and thank you thank you god bless